you know, Aloha Margie for tuning in. And uh, so that was a, a simple piece, a simple study. The range of Francisco Tarega's music is phenomenal. He was a composer from Spain and really expanded the language of the classical guitar in the 1800s, mid 1800s, uh, towards the end of the Romantic era. And the guitar had evolved into the full size Spanish guitar that we know today. And he really took full advantage of that. He wrote these great concert pieces. One of them in the piece, actually in the book, we end with the lessons now. Uh, I cover four of his pieces, Lagrima, Adelita, this is studio in F, and then also one of the great masterpieces that he wrote that is called Caprico Arab. And that is in level eight. I had so much fun arranging that piece. And thinking that it was such a great masterpiece, we have a discount for anyone who's interested in checking out these new courses, the grades five through eight at the Ukulele Corner Classical Fingerstyle, Fingerstyle course. So we have a discount code, it's masterpiece. So if you apply that, you get 30% off. And so it's quite a, a good deal. And that goes through throughout the weekend. You can use that through tomorrow. And so check the courses out and let me know what you think. I had a lot of fun working on them and getting them ready. So this piece is just, it, it works on a nice technique with the right hand of bringing out melody while you're doing an arpeggio pattern. And it's in 12, eight times. So it feels like there are four counts, one, two, three, four, but each beat is divided up into three counts. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So you get that uh, division of three, beats, or three counts in each beat. And then with the arpeggio, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That's where we get our six, eight pattern. It's easy to count one, two, 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 three, three, two, three, four, two, three. You just feel these triplets going by. That's the basic right hand pattern that's used throughout the whole piece. And so this is a really great way, like a lot of the pieces in the book, to focus on one, sort of repetitive pattern and really get control over it so you can control your tone, which notes to bring out, where's the melody, and which notes should be louder than others, and how can you then have these nice rises and falls uh, smoothly as the arpeggio is going up and down. So what the pattern is with the tuning, G, C, E, A, this piece actually works really well in, with the high G tuning as well. I'll show you that in a second. A lot of the pieces in the book end with the lessons. You can do either. At Ukulele Corner, we have a fingerstyle course for uh, beginning fingerstyle players, and that one mainly uses high G, but a lot of the courses are interchangeable with the two different tunings. Uh, with that said, I would say a lot of the pieces in the book definitely need the low G uh, because of certain bass notes and resonances we want. But this piece actually sounds really nice with the high G as well. So when you're all ready with the tuning, we're gonna play in the key of F, and what we're gonna do is hold down an F chord, and the right hand pattern that goes throughout the entire piece is going to be thumb, index, middle, ring, middle, index. And then it repeats ring, middle, index two more times. So you get three notes going up, one, two, three, the fourth string, third, and second. And then you go ring, middle, index, ring, middle, index, ring, middle, index three times. So it sounds like this. So you feel the pulse every three notes. One, two, three, four. So 12 eight is very much like four, four time, which we play in so often. You just feel the division of three beats or three notes per beat. So see if you can warm up and try to do that pattern, get the thumb, index, middle, and ring playing across the strings. So you start with your thumb on the fourth string, index on the third, middle on the on second, then ring finger playing the high string then descend to the third string. And here, one, two, three, four. We start to hear a melody coming out of the highest pitch with the ring finger. So if I just repeat that note, we can try to work on our tone, get in a nice, warm, full sound. So a couple things to think about with the setup of your right hand is getting a nice C shape and curve. And notice how my fingers are up over the, the strings. Instead of back here, or playing at an angle like this. We'll do other pieces where we will have the strumming technique. 
and even finger picking using feminine index, doing brushes and rolls and things. But a lot of the music in the fingersaw course, we're bringing our hand back so that the thumb is right about at the beginning of the fingerboard here, instead of way up over as we often play as we're strumming with our thumb and fingers. So with this hand position, you just bring your hand back a little bit. What I like to do is lay my hand flat over the strings. If my index finger, in this case, is going to be playing the third string, I get that back knuckle right over that string, come straight up in the air, curve the fingers into a C shape, make sure my forearm is touching here, and then I curve my wrist in slightly like this to get into position. Now I'm going to have good clearance moving from the back knuckle, and that's the whole idea that we want to get with this. Instead of the hand being back and pulling up on the notes like this, I'm forward more and tilted forward like this. So I can really sweep back from the back knuckle instead of the middle knuckle. It's very common to do this, to pull from the middle knuckle pulling up. I'm trying to sweep back. It's good to see where people are tuning in from. We got Bob's from San Jose. Thanks for tuning in. And we got someone from Portland. We got my dear friend, Jack from Steamboat Springs, and we got Margie from Maine. So people from all over. Maybe not too many people right now from Hawaii because we're bracing for a hurricane. So right after this is Paulo and done, I'm outside putting up uh, sandbags. So uh, send us good well wishes and everything here in Hawaii that the storm veers north. It's, it's headed right towards the Big Island right now, but yeah. So anyway. Uh, but that's the great thing about music. It's very calming, right? Playing this beautiful music, it keeps us very calm. So then when you have that right hand position, yeah, everyone just try this. Let's say we're just gonna play open strings. Just try to set up that block chord. A good way to test this is that if you touch the strings, four, three, two, one, uh, and you feel that contact here, notice that my forearm is touching about a 45 degree angle behind where the bridge is. It's not way down here. It's up a little bit higher than you might be used to. That allows for a nice straight line from the elbow through the wrist. It can tilt a little bit, but we're trying to avoid too much of this or this. So it's try we're trying to get more of a straight angle with a slight tilt and a slight tilt this way. If you tilt too much, it's hard to move your fingers. You wanna have a nice balance where you get that room for the fingers to sweep back and your wrist isn't too uh, turned like this, where it's strained, it strains all the tendons and the muscles going through there. So with that hand position, setting up this block chord, just try to move your fingers back until they touch the back of your palm. That's a really good way to make sure that you're moving from the back knuckle here. And the finger style course that we have at Ukulele Corner really goes over details of setting the hands up. This works beautifully. And then when you get into the classical repertoire courses, it's just diving into all sorts of pieces like etudes like this and studies that reinforce that. And then we get into some of the great repertoire of classical music by G.S. Bach, Antonio Vivaldi, Beethoven, Cooperin, many really wonderful pieces that I'm sure you've heard before, and the many brilliant pieces that I've transcribed from the classical guitar repertoire from Spain and South America uh, that are really important parts. And I was just thrilled when I found ways. It was a great, I'd spent a, a solid year or so just exploring pieces, and I found these pieces that work really well on the ukulele. So I was so excited when I made those discoveries. And so there's each course is all leaning towards this idea of really expanding your musicality and the any music that you play if it's beyond classical music too the techniques that you'll learn are very very functional beneficial for any type of music that you might be playing so okay let's check check out that pattern with the right hand if we just play now across the strings with that hand set up let's try to go up the strings and then back down three times that's our pattern that we're going to use. Now what I'm trying to do is put a little bit more weight into this high pitch with a ring finger. So what you can practice with this, and it's good to try it for all the fingers, is try accenting. Let me try to do just ascending arpeggio. But I'm going to try to play a little louder with a ring finger. Just putting a little bit more weight into that note. 
not a lot more pressure or, or strength in the note, but I'm just I'm trying to move with a, a quick snap through the string and putting pressing into the string just slightly, all with free strokes with the right hand. Let's try to accent the thumb. See, I can get the thumb to be the loudest pitch. If I wanted to bring out a melody in the bass, that'd be perfect. How about index finger? The second note is the loud one. How about the middle finger? You can really change the character of an arpeggio by which notes you, you get control over your right hand to accent. Most of the time it's going to be the highest or lowest pitch. A lot of times our melody notes are in the highest voice of a chord, right? So when we play this melody line, you can bring out that high pitch. If I didn't play anything else, you'd hear one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If I just play lightly below that, this is the beauty of playing fingerstyle. You can have, think of an orchestra, you could have different parts, right? So there's this polyphonic music. Even though there's just one line going up and down here, we're creating the illusion that there's more than one part happening by bringing out a melody versus the accompaniment. Uh, let's see, there's the, let me see if I can move the chat box uh, from the screen. I'm not quite sure how I do that. Um, hide messages from, there we go. Sorry about that. I think all the messages were popping up on the screen. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it'd be easier to see my hands that way, right? Hey, Roman's tuning in from Slovakia. Aloha, how are you doing? I'm all the way, I'm here in Oahu, uh, in Hawaii, Kailua. And so the song that we're working on right now is the Estudio in F Major by Francisco Tarega. And this is one of the pieces that is in the classical course. This is in also the, the book, The Graded Repertoire for Classical Ukulele, that's on Ukulele Corner. We just launched grades five through eight. And so we're having a special this weekend with the discount code at Ukulele Corner for grades five through eight, it's a masterpiece. If you use that when you're at checkout, you save 30% off the course price. So for those of you that just are tuning in, with this in, in mind, I played the piece a second ago. Let me just play the first half again so you can get this in your ear. We're starting on the F chord. Play that twice, we add this melody at the third fret. Then fifth fret, third, first with open strings back to F. Then we're going to do an A7 shape, D minor, G7, and we end on C. So what those shapes are now, thinking of the left hand, now that we have that right hand pattern together, is we play an F chord, then we're going to add the third fret of the high string, then release it. That happens in the first two measures. Then we move our third finger up to the fifth fret and basically play a C chord, but with the third fret, or th uh, third finger playing the fifth fret, then to the first finger on the third fret, then first back to the first line. That's the first four bars of the piece. Give it a listen, then we'll try it together. F, again, F, C, at the fifth fret, third, first, it's like a C7, right? I'll just loop that a few times. You can try to play along. I'll play nice and slow. So give that a practice and let's try it together. This is great for working on right hand. And it's also nice to develop this 12-8 rhythm. There are many great uh, R&B songs, jazz and blues that use a lot of 12-8. So even though we're playing a classical study here, this is doing some, it would help in tremendous ways. Afterwards, I'll show you a couple ideas of how you could use this technique and this rhythm to play some other songs. So let's play that together. Ready, play. So the F shape, then the third fret, back, repeat that. 
third finger plays the fifth fret, then the first finger, then the third fret, then back, then like the first measure. Okay, now let's play this shape. There's a way, if you imagine a G7 chord, but we're going to free up our first finger. Then move up two frets, put your first finger down on the second fret of the low string. This is an A7 chord. It's just two frets higher than G7, so it's a movable shape now of uh, A7. But what we're going to do is we're going to start with an open string. So release your pinky so it goes two, four, three, high string open. Then we're going to put our pinky down and release it with a pattern. Now, by the way, if you have the book, this is page 70. Just if, for those of you that have the graded repertoire for classical ukulele book, and it's available through Ukulele Corner. It's sold on Amazon. It's on my site as well, jeffpetersonguitar.com. So make sure that uh, you, you can refer to that music if you have the book. And if, you're, if you take the course, all of the sheet music with tablature and all sorts of fingerings and details, that's included with all the music that is offered in the lessons. Okay, so that A7 is going to move to a D minor. Now, if you hold that chord shape, it has to then move up to the fifth position. You make a bar with your index finger and cover the seventh fret with your third finger. Then we're going to go up to our pinky, three frets higher, and eighth fret of the high string, and then back. Same thing for the entire piece with your right hand. But it's a little tricky to get this note then to have to jump. And to avoid that jump, what I do is I like to use open strings when possible. And it turned out I can play this note, E, as a second string open. By playing that last beat on the second string, we're going to break from our pattern index finger is going to play the second string instead of the third. That allows my left hand just a moment to be able to jump from second position right here and get right up in position. See how I rotate my hand, the whole forearm moves forward, so I'm set up. The bar chord needs to be right in line with the fret wire and only covering three strings. Then you can get this higher chord much more easily. If your hand is back like this, no way your pinky is going to be able to get it there. It's going to be really hard to get. You're going to get muffled notes. right? So you really want to rotate forward. The thumb comes down low. If you need to release your third finger, that's OK at first. That makes it easier to get the uh, pinky in place. So OK, from there, we're going to go to a G7 chord. And put down the pinky, G7 sus on the third fret of the high string in the back. And then from here, we need a C chord. And we're going to use our second finger as what I call a guide finger. That's where this finger stays on the string and moves to a new position. We're in second position. G7, right? It's 0, 2, 1, 2. Your pinky goes up, then back down. This finger guides us up while rotating the hand around again. Now we just want to borrow two strings and put our third finger down. Notice how I really come forward with my hand here. So that's going to connect a G7 to this really great way of playing a bar chord to C. It looks like that B flat chord, right? If you've ever played a B flat, it's related to A, turned into a movable bar chord shape at third fret. That gives a C. And when we get to the C chord, it's just the end of the phrase. We just go up the arpeggio and right back down to end on the thumb. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, or three, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, three. So that's the first half of the piece. All right, let me read some of the comments and see how you guys are doing. And I want to uh, send a a big mahalo out to Simon Powis, who's tuned in from New York City right now. And he's he's looking at the chat so I can look at my fingers more. <laughs> We've had a lot of fun working on this together. And so just remember that if you're if you're just tuning in, 
we're, uh, just today we're looking at Francisco Terega's uh, study his studio in F major, and we're working on some right hand, left hand techniques. And this is part of courses that are offered at Ukulele the Corner. And we're offering a discount for we just launched today grades five through eight, where it really gets exciting in the book and we get into some great repertoire. I filmed performance videos, there's sheet music for all of the lessons, and then video lessons that are broken into many segments. So I, I would say altogether, there are 32 pieces and each one has three, between three and five videos. So there's a lot, a lot of content there. And it's great, amazing music that will really expand your horizons of what you can do with fingerstyle ukulele. So uh, we're just looking at one of the pieces that works on drilling in a particular right hand pattern. Now that I've gone through the whole thing, let me play the second half again of this. There are two sections. We're just looking at the first section here, but the second half, bar eight of the, I'm sorry, bar five of the first half. It starts on the A7. Then switches to D minor. Then moves down to G7 to sus. And then the second finger is a guide finger taking us up to C. So if we do the whole thing together, it sounds like this. Try to go for the sweetest tone you can get on uh, those high notes and vibrato is great. Here's that second half. The open string switch, the rotation of the hand, the guide finger, You want to think of that now dynamically. We're drilling this pattern, right, with our right hand. Now let's get some color. Let's get some beauty and expression in what we do. Let's, let's come up with a, a concept of how we're going to rise and fall with this. The first two measures are the same. So let's try to do something different in the second measure. Let's play it a little softer. So what I would say, we start at a medium volume, we dip down a little bit, and then this measure, measure three, make that strong so you feel that fifth fret. That's the peak of our first phrase, and that's going to just taper off strong, less, less, soft. And then the second half, this is getting some drama here with these minor chords, right? Strong, and then taper off. So start at measure five, it can be a sudden color change where it's a little bit brighter and then it continues to get louder there. Uh, peaking around measure seven, then deep crescendo. Let's listen to how that would sound. Less, and echo. Stronger, less, less, less. A little bit more. Big drama here, loud. It peaks here, most, less. I'll also do it again. Second time I'm starting even sweeter. Maybe I'll stall a little bit on that, this note, the second, second measure, the second time, or just something different. This note I hang out on this. Really sweet, little variations in the tempo. Crescendo, let's get really big this time. I even slowed down a little bit again. So even though it's just a study and it's just drilling one pattern, you can still try to work on musical expression. And that's something that we do a lot in the lessons at Ukulele Corner, trying to develop not just learning the notes, but learning what to say with the notes as well. Okay, let's take a, a dive in and, and play uh, a little bit of the second half. How's everyone doing with it so far? Is it you having fun? Uh, it's a great piece. It's a simple idea, but see how you can get some musical expression with a repeated pattern. The main idea and a very uh, common thing is for the high string to get really shrill sounding. 
So thinking about just repeating that middle finger, playing some scales, playing some melody notes on the high string. That five, three, one, zero, right? What notes are those? D, C, B flat, because we're in the key of F, and A. Can you repeat those notes all with ring finger playing? Notice how I'm moving from the back knuckle. I'm sweeping, sweeping my finger back. If the strings are vibrating this way versus this way, you're gonna get a much better sound. You don't wanna pull up on the notes. You get that raspy sound when it hits the fingerboard, right? How's your vibrato? Can you move your hand back and forth, get some expression out of those notes? One thing, the ukulele has very, very little sustain, right? Especially with melody notes. You really have to try to milk everything you can to get, uh, get some tone out of it. A couple things to help with that. Pressing into the string, down. I'm not just sweeping through the note. I'm landing on it, making contact. Contact, pressure, release. Use your ear, listen to your sound and see what sounds good to you. Is that sweeping motion? Is it giving you a shrill sound? So then when you play that line, it's a beautiful phrase, right? We're always going for, usually going for a really beautiful, warm sound instead of a thin, bright sound, right? Okay, the second half, we're gonna start on a C7. And we're gonna go from the first fret to the third fret in the back. Then we go back to our F chord. And we get to a very important technique here that I use a lot when playing jazz and other types of styles, and it's a hinge bar. I'm playing the first fret of the second string F for an F chord, and I need a B flat for an F sus, and I just hinge bar, I just collapse the tip joint. See if you can do that. Can you wiggle your index finger back and forth? So we're getting an open string, or fretted. Watch what we can do with that. Aha, uh -huh. we can get two notes without having to do a weird fingering to get our second finger or another finger down there just by doing, wiggling around the first finger. So that we get those first two bars, back to F. Now if it's hard for you to hold down the second finger while you do that, at first you can just let go of the second finger. Get it out of the way so that you can really focus on that motion with the first finger. When it gets more comfortable, you'll be able to uh, do that hinge bar. Okay, from there we go in measure 11. We're going to go to uh, E7. Does everyone know how to play E7? One, two, zero, two, with the third finger on top. One, two, zero, two. So we get a G sharp, we get a D, we get an E, and we get a B natural on top. We're gonna do just like we did, exactly what we did with the G7. Remember, we put our pinky down and back, but we're just moving our first finger to the fourth string. We do that, then we move up to our second finger, A minor, second fret, open strings, then a B natural on top. We go back to that C idea, remember we did that, but now we're gonna do it at B flat. So three, two, one, one, a B flat chord. Pinky goes down and then back. So, that B flat chord. Then we go back to the F idea with the hinge bar, same exact thing. Then we end with our C, the five, three, one, shape which we already did and our page eight up and down F chord. And the last two notes are the fourth string and the second, thumb and middle, playing, and we call it a pinch, right? You're playing those two notes together. Well, they call it a pinch, actually, in Hawaiian slack key. The old timers would say that, when you play two notes with thumb and a finger. So let me play the second half for you. It sounds like this. That F with a hinge bar. E7, going to A minor. B flat, back to F, C, F. Each section, the first half and second half, repeats twice. And each one 
is an eight bar phrase. So altogether we have 16 measures in the piece. So what you wanna start doing is start hearing a melody. Even though we're just playing arpeggios, as I mentioned before, that the notes in the high string, that's your melody. So let's hear what the melody is in the second half. One, two, three, four, one, two. Very sequential, right? Just downbeats on beat two, three, and four. But beautifully, just weaving around chromatically around the first three frets. Then finally, fifth fret with a scale that descends. Listen to that with the arpeggios. That's what I'm highlighting, those high notes. Drama here, so you can get louder. Then just a gradual descent. So we can think of a one concept, one way of interpreting the second half. Instead of like two small up and down slopes like we did in the first section, we can think of it as one long phrase through the whole eight bars. And what I mean by that is you can start this pretty sweet, soft, and gradually, little by little, more and more, so that by measure 13, it's B flat, we're pretty big. And it peaks here, measure 15, we're coming down. Then it, it tapers off at the end. So you can make a point for doing two phrases there again, but I, I like that. I, I can feel that long eight bar phrase. So sometimes phrases are very short, four bars or even two bars. Other times they can be longer, like an eight bar phrase here. So how is that going for everybody? How, if After you've done this, the whole idea is, okay, we've really gone to town now doing this pattern, right? So that should be feeling much more comfortable. Doing so arpeggiation across the strings, accenting every three notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. String numbers are four, three, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Angela uh, Arnold just asked, what level in the book? This is level four in the book. And so. There are a lot of studies and etudes in the early levels, and then we get into a lot of great repertoire. All the way through, you'll find you know, pieces that aren't meant as etudes, but I wanted to do a balance in the book between etudes and studies like this that focus on particular techniques, and then the repertoire of classical music, and trying to find new repertoire for the ukulele. And it, it's really exciting because there is relatively limited music uh, arranged for ukulele. John King did brilliant arrangements. I love the work that he did with the high G tuning. So I thought it'd be nice to add to that repertoire with low G. And, uh, you know, I have very dear friends here in Hawaii that are, you know, the battle between high and low G. I like to have both. Here's the high G, here's low G. I have them with arms in arms reach at all times. And you notice a guitar behind me too. So <laughs> I like variety. So if I let me play this on high G, just so you can just hear something. Some of these pieces work, others it's just very, very important because of linear motion between the third string and, and the low string to have connectivity of a phrase so it doesn't jump up an octave. But what this does, it just transforms this first bass note into something that sounds more like a melody. So. high pitch, it adds one note to that high pitch out of the, the three notes we have on top. I'm oh, sorry. It, I think it sounds beautiful. So now we're hearing the melody is because the high G is going to be much closer in pitch to those notes on the high string, right? So now we have four notes in the melody. I think it's great. So 
Maybe I'll bring out that thumb note. earlier I talked about doing that exercise of accenting different fingers out of the four. Now I'm putting a little bit more weight into the thumb and the high G that seems to really suit the music. I use a thumbnail and to get a nice warm sound which is hard to do with the, the high tuning sometimes when you're using if you use you know the flesh of the thumb to get a warmer sound but I want to use the nail to make it strong but it's kind of hard to see, but I'm getting in there in the groove of my fingernail, right where the fingertip and the nail are. I file that down so I can kind of be, let's see, I'm landing in the side of the nail here instead of back here. I'm getting right in there. So you're getting a little bit of fingertip in. Notice how my thumb is down on the string before it plays. So I'm landing and I'm finding that spot that I'm playing the note. Okay, Mary Ann is asking from Pennsylvania, I have a concert and a tenor ukulele. I have a recommendation to use the tenor when you're using low G. The, the longer neck length is better for the lower, the lower pitch. It works on either. Uh, low G won't work so well on a soprano ukulele, but with either a tenor or a concert, it can work. But particularly tenor, that's, that's what both these instruments are. And so uh, I like to have both. I think they're both wonderful, really. And uh, it really changes the, the quality of sounds. I love the close voicings of chordal playing with high G. If I'm playing jazz, That's a classic sound of ukulele, right? And that's what it first was introduced as, coming, evolving from the Portuguese braguinha and machete, these four string instruments that had reentrant tuning. It came right out of that sound. And for strumming, it sounds cleaner. For playing, uh, I'll do the same strums. Hear how that low G is just kind of screaming at you? Whereas if I play the high G, it's going to be much more subtle. It's that idea of having this note be more like a higher register melody note uh, or higher interval. And if you think of jazz, it's great if you hear a lot of big band arranging, they have what are called uh, drop two or drop nine voicings where the sequence of notes the lowest pitch is often raised up and it creates a really closed position chord instead of the chords being really sped, spread out. That's a lot of the sound of big band music. So that's one reason why the high G works great for jazz playing. But a lot of the music that we're playing with the classical repertoire, often having a nice sustained bass note uh, will give you an, an idea of more of a, a separate voice instead of trying to get all those voices to connect as one unit, we're trying to pull them apart so that we can hear a bass line. more of a bass line and a melody on top. So we have polyphonic music with independent parts. So it definitely works. Uh, and there's so many brilliant 
ukulele players who play with a high G tuning, who just do a phenomenal things with this concept. It still works. But for a lot of the repertoire that I was starting to look at as I did the arrangements, I found that low G, I did both. I, I did a lot of arrangements with, in both tunings. And I found for certain pieces, it was very playable with low G, but not as playable with high G. Oh, Chris Miller just stopped by to say aloha, my dear friend. How's it, Chris? Hope you're doing well. Uh, and things that people, a lot of people are busy online these days, right? Before the pandemic, they weren't getting online so much. And now uh, multiple Zoom meetings in a day. This is my second one. I did a guitar lesson for my uh, Slack Key students a little earlier, which is a lot of fun. But I, I'm so happy that we can connect this way. And at Ukulele Corner, we're going to start offering pretty regular uh, video lessons here and there for people who sign up for membership. We're going to start that uh, hopefully in a month or so. And uh, so, and also with people who've purchased courses, every now and then I'll do a Zoom lesson where we can really interact and actually speak to each other instead of just the chat that I look at half the time. So uh, I hope that answers some of your questions and get some ideas. Let's say, okay, now if I wanna take this idea and apply it to something, which I know a lot of you are gonna have interest beyond maybe just playing classical repertoire. Uh, I think playing the, the, the pieces by Bach in this book or Francois Couperin, and when you get into the higher level pieces, they can be pieces that will be in your heart and soul for life. You know, they, these pieces that are pretty phenomenal and you can learn from them for years to come. Um, Sometimes it's nice to take a concept from an etude like this and see if you can apply it into other places. So let's say if I play, let's do like, I uh, think I'm here in Hawaii and the Can't Help Falling in Love, the Elvis piece is something that a lot of people who visit the islands like to hear. So let me play that, it's got a 6-8 feel. Now I have control of which voices I wanna bring up. You can hear that melody. So you may have noticed there, I was playing the pattern, but many times I didn't play the pattern, but I still have that feeling of the 6-8 going on, and that's because maybe a melody note's on a lower string, and I just kind of ghost the pattern around it. Back to the pattern. Then I'm in the strumming, right, for a different sound. I mean, it's such an important part of the ukulele technique, right? So being able to do, go in and out of that sort of playing here and then playing here for the finger style is really important. And thing, things like that. So uh, my dear friend from Hawaii Island, uh, Anselin, I, I hope you guys are safe. I'm thinking about you tonight. I know she lives in a beautiful place and she plays incredible ukulele and guitar lele. 
and she played a recording of Ku'upua i Po'o Kalani by Lido Kalani recently. Out serenaded her chickens by her chicken coop, and I really enjoyed that video. Absolutely played beautifully. Uh, one of the Queen's great compositions, absolutely amazing. She wrote it while in prisons during the overthrow of the Hawaiian monarchy in 1895 in Iolani Palace. Uh, but she's asking, when is the Hawaiian chorus going to be ready? And I have a lot of the music prepared. I probably have about 70 or so arrangements now that I've written out. I just have to film them. So I would say we're aiming at releasing membership um, in maybe a month or so. And my goal is to, I have a couple things I'm working on. Practice routines that are very closely related to Simon Pallas and what he's done for classical guitar corner. Brilliant practice routines. Uh, and then the Hawaiian chorus. So that's the idea behind those. And remember, for any of you who are just tuning in, we're offering the new course, grades five through eight, for a 30% discount if you use the discount code on Ukulele Corner of Masterpiece. And if you have any trouble with that, just send us a message uh, through the, the email and uh, from the site, the contact page, and we can help sort it out. But that should work fine uh, using the word Masterpiece. And I created 32 lesson uh, pieces that are covered. And each lesson has many videos and sheet music. Everything's there. I'm going to offer tutorials uh, using Zoom every now and then for people who become members or who purchase the course. So uh, how are you guys doing otherwise? Do you have any other questions, anything that you're checking out? If you're wondering about the chords, what I was just playing. F, C, or A minor, D minor, this little descending line, then B flat, F, C, B flat, C or C7, F, G minor, F, C7F, E7 takes us to the bridge. You'd repeat that first section again. Then this is just A minor and E7. One thing we cover at Ukulele Corner is getting to know how to harmonize a melody. And so how can you play an A minor chord, but we need to have this melody note, and then we need to have this melody note over an E7. How do you find a fingering for that? And so that's a very important part about solo playing, is being able to find ways of bringing a melody to life by harmonizing it with a chord uh, below it. Someone's asking, are these courses lifetime courses? Yes. And you have, there's uh, all the sheet music and access to the course is lifetime. And then if you become a member later, you'll get access to everything. But as soon as you purchase a course, it's just yours to enjoy anytime on your iPhone, your iPad, uh, any computer you have, you can get access to it just by logging into your account at Ukulele Corner. Uh, let's try to play one more time. Let's try to play through this Francisco Tadega piece. And so we'll do the arpeggiation. So ready, I'll count. One, two, three, two, three, four. So arpeggiation over F chord. that a little softer like an echo our third finger goes up to the fifth fret open strings below third fret first back to our first F chord a7 pinky goes down open string allows us to jump up to the fifth position D minor chord G7 right to C jump to the second half, C7, first fret, to the third fret with open strings, F with the hinge bar with your first finger right, it's going to flatten there, E7 with the pinky going down, very similar to the C, or G7 shape we did, A minor, B natural there, to B flat chord, pinky goes down in C, back to the F with the hinge bar, and then descending winding down as far as volume. Someone is asking, what's the difference between a course and a membership? If you purchase the course, that's just getting one thing. 
So we have, so far, we have three different courses. We have a finger style course for beginning finger style, mainly with high G, but it works for low G as well. Learning to play single note melodies, accompaniment patterns, setup of the right and left hand. I wrote 10 etudes that we worked through. And then we start getting into some great Hawaiian repertoire, jazz repertoire, and classical repertoire, and folk songs as well. They're backtracks. Uh, there are five different levels. Then we have grades one through four from the classical ukulele course. And then we just launched now grades five through eight. So we have three separate courses that are available now for individual purchase. And once again, you get a discount for the, the latest course using the, the uh, discount code masterpiece. Hey, another thing before I forget, I was, I'm doing a live stream for Blue Note. It was supposed to air tonight. I filmed it a few days ago, but because of this hurricane coming through, the news channel is uh, hijacking the Blue Note page for news reviews so, and reports. And so that's what I'll be watching. Uh, but So my concert has moved to August 8th through the Blue Note uh, website. So Blue Note Hawaii at 6 p.m. on the Facebook page of Blue Note Hawaii on August 8th. You can watch a live concert that I did there. All right, well, I hope everyone enjoyed that uh, little jam session tutorial. And I'll be back with more. You can see performance videos uh, at the Ukulele Corner YouTube page. We've been releasing more and more performance videos from the book of pieces. And also, they're on the website. You can find three free pieces that you can get to check out uh, Hawaii Aloha, House of the Rising Sun, and an Aguado Etude, uh, Dionisio Aguado, that you can learn those three pieces. You can check out uh, La Grima by Francisco Tarega, another one of his great pieces, that there's a lesson for that on the site. Uh, and lots more to come at Ukulele Corner. So thanks so much for for being here and tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Take care. Aloha.